Well, Jesus instructed the church before he finished his earthly ministry to remember him and proclaim his death until he comes. And so each week when we gather together at Grace Bible Church, we like to participate in the Lord's table and take communion together. So this is that time, and for our time this morning, we're going to look at one verse from the book of Jude, second to last book in your Bible. And that is Jude verse 5. He writes, Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. It's a helpful, brief word for us this morning to remember exactly who we are remembering as we take communion. If you've been here for the past several weeks as we've been in the book of Mark, then you've heard John launch from Mark back through the Old Testament, and we've seen this unique messenger of God, this angel of Yahweh, the angel of his presence, this messenger of the covenant. And we've traced that promise from the very beginning that there would be this seed who came. And we've seen the person of the angel of Yahweh who speaks for God, as God, visited Moses in the burning bush, rescued a people from Egypt, protected them, brought them out of Egypt, promised to safely bring them into the promised land and eventually fulfill all of God's promises to his people. For some of us, that is new information, astonishing information as we've looked at the Old Testament but we see in verse 5 that this was not news to Jude. Jude says that the Lord, some of your translations may read Jesus, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. Now there's some question whether the, the better manuscripts have Jesus or Lord there. But either way, it's a reference to the same individual because clearly all throughout the book of Jude, when he makes reference to the Lord, he is speaking specifically of none other than Jesus Christ. Look at verse four. Certain persons have crept in unnoticed. Though those who were long before marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Again in verse 17, but you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Again, verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord, Jesus Christ to eternal life. And then finally in verse 25, this incredible doxology to close the book, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever, amen. The Lord is Jesus. And the Lord who rescued a people from out of the land of Egypt, verse 5, is Jesus. And the Lord who then destroyed those who did not believe is the Lord Jesus. These two astounding claims being made about the one whom we remember now. First, that he saved a people out of the land of Egypt. 
the salvation that Jesus accomplished in taking his people out of Egypt is not even the main point of what Jude is getting after in this verse. But it is helpful to remember that Jesus, the same one who died on the cross and rose again, was the Lord who rescued a people out of the land of Egypt. If you remember the history of the Exodus, then you know what it took to get Israel out from under the oppression of the Egyptians. Miraculous judgments, and in some cases, once in the history of the world type events. He turned water to blood, droves of frogs and gnats and flies that decimated the land of Egypt. He killed the Egyptians' livestock, afflicted them with boils. He ruined their crops with hail and then with locusts. He covered the land with tangible darkness and then eventually reduced the nation's population by killing every single firstborn of each household of the Egyptians. And that in a single night, Jesus, the Lord, did that. After this, he would even split the Red Sea, drown Pharaoh and his army as he protected the people going before them and behind them to prevent their enemies from succeeding as they walked through on dry land. The Lord Jesus did all these things. And this same Lord also came to earth. He lived a perfect life as a man, was without sin in his attitude, in his motives, in his actions, in his words. And he allowed sinful men whom he had created to mock him, spit on him, strike him, beat him, put a crown of thorns on his head, torture him, by eventually hanging him on a cross, all so that he could endure the furious judgment of God in place of those who would believe. The Lord Jesus did these things. He did this for all who would place their trust in him. What the Lord Jesus did to Egypt, he did, this text says, before he destroyed those who did not believe, which is also a fitting reminder for us this morning. After saving them, Jesus, the Lord also destroyed them. He killed men and women in the wilderness who persisted in unbelief, who repeatedly rebelled against him. He did this through various means, judicial executions carried out by the people themselves, through plagues. He caused the ground to open up and swallowed some for fire to consume others. He sent fiery serpents and many other judgments to kill those who did not believe, all in an effort to fulfill his word and get the people into the land. These two realities, his salvation, his judgment, are reminders that the Lord Jesus is a merciful savior and a righteous judge. That is who we remember this morning, a merciful savior, a righteous judge. And those who continue in unbelief, refusing to submit themselves to him will eventually incur his condemnation. If that is you this morning, you must repent. You must repent as we just heard, because God is good, he is eager to save if you would only fear him. Believe him and you can have mercy. For those who do refuse that mercy, then we would ask that as the bread and juice come around, that you would just pass, that don't partake. This is a time for believers, those who have entrusted themselves to Christ, who love him, who obey him. But those of us who do believe, who thankfully have the privilege of wearing the name of Christ as Christian, whether you're a member of Grace Bible Church or not, then you can take communion and rejoice in what Christ has accomplished on your behalf. Apart from you, before you existed, endured God's wrath on your, 
behalf, in your place, was your substitute, and took the punishment that you deserve. So as those elements come around, take them on your own when your heart is prepared, and then I'll be back to pray for us.